But my mother passed when I was in the third grade. At a young age. Yes. And uh, I lived with my father and a housekeeper. Uh, she was from down south. Her name was Miss Sinoni. She used mm -hmm. to take care of me. And then my father passed when I was in the seventh grade. Yeah, we on Boss Talk TV. Shout out to E. He the reason you see me. Me and you first talked about that. I said, man, this guy right here, you know, this probably, this is one of them ones, man, that you, you just don't it, don't, it don't happen all the time. So, man, thank you so much for inviting us into your home, man. Definitely, definitely. You know, Kenny said, uh, I want to get Boss Talk over there to the crib, you know, because we wanted to do promotion for the book. Man. And uh, I said, well, you know, we could do it at my house. So, uh, you know, you guys were invited. Then come to find out you're friends with my man, Big Court. Man, holding court. So it's love is love. You know, I, like I told you, uh, as you were setting up, I kind of try to pick and choose a lot of these podcasts out of control, you know. So I'm happy to be here with you. And I'm, I'm a, you know, tell you what you want to know. <laughs> <laughs> man, I just like, like, like when I first started diving in, man, like I said, it, it don't just start here for me. I, I, I've been around a little while, too. So I remember when hip hop first started, man. And I remember the West Coast movement. And you can't even that don't start without Ice-T making a move, you know. So for me, that was big, you know, all the way back to your first power and all the stuff that you was doing, man, just, just was extraordinary for a guy who was in the country who might not have never, ever understood what was going on on the West Coast, really on that level for our people. It's kind of like this podcast, like you start to dive in into uh, black media, to be honest, which you start to looking into different things that normally people wouldn't wouldn't uh wouldn't tap into unless they had insight a lot of people tell our story but you just don't hear our story being told from our point of view a lot of times mm -hmm. so I, I, that's why i love podcasts well it's good you know the media has always been pretty much predominantly white whether you're dealing with rolling stone magazine vibe all the different stuff exactly so a lot of times you're not really hearing our voice you're hearing an edit you're hearing something different so i'm definitely pro actually us telling our story yeah. the way we want to tell it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I've been out here so long and there's so many misconstrued things about me and different things, but you just have to read it and laugh some of the stuff. you like, really? That, that's not how that happens. Right. So when you finally, how you say, get it from the horse's mouth, you know, that's a chance to take advantage of it, you know, because some people were there as far as West Coast rap. Yeah, I was like really the first rapper that really got national attention. There were a lot of rappers out there trying to get it, but I was able to pop off early. But that was with help from New York City. Mm. Uh, I was put on by Africa Islam, who was president of the Zulu Nation, son of Bambada, who gave me a little love to help me get out and break. So, you know, there's a story behind everything, but you know, the true story can only come from the actual mouth of the person that lived it. Right. That's right. <laughs> right. But before we get into all of your accolades, I'd love to, because for me personally, I always like to get into your background, how you were raised and so forth, because in order for us to be the people that we are today, we had to go through different things True. from childhood till now. So I know you were um, raised in California. Kind of, no. Uh, I was born in uh, Newark, New Jersey. Okay. Um, my mother and father... My mother was a uh, Creole. Mm. She's from New Orleans. She was a very, very fair-skinned black woman. Okay. Back in the 50s, they called it, you could pass. Mm. Uh, that means you could pass as white, like Lena Horne and a lot okay. of really fair. She was real fair. Real fair. Okay. And that's why I'm fair. Right. But uh, she wasn't white, uh, but my father was brown-skinned, like, say, Kenny. Mm -hmm. And they were considered almost to be an interracial marriage. marriage because of how light my mom was. Mm -hmm. And that's why I learned a lot about racism because mm -hmm. it wasn't tolerated in my house because my mother would get to hear white people talk about black people. Mm -hmm. And she used to just tell me, you know, people are stupid, you know, mm -hmm. and that was just unacceptable in my house that people learning that people would judge us right. for how we look. But my mother passed when I was in the third grade. At a young age. Yes, and uh, I lived with my father and a housekeeper. Uh, she was from down south. Her name was Miss Sinoni. She mm -hmm. used to take care of me. And then my father passed when I was in the seventh grade. Young? Yeah. How did that affect you, losing your parents so young? 
honestly, it didn't really affect me as bad as people think. Because back in them days, when a parent would pass or somebody would pass, they would just take the kid and move it out. Like you nowadays, kids are around funerals and deaths and things like that. In them days, if somebody passed, you'd be moved off to an aunt. Mm. You wouldn't be around the funeral. You wouldn't be around. None. Really, not to the funeral at all. Wow. None of that. They 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 shelter you from all that madness, and then you know you just have to address it. I um. I was too little, third grade. You know, it's like my daughter now is seven years old. Right. She's in the first grade, so it's kind of like. You don't understand death yet. Is she ever coming back? Right. Because as a child, I would think, okay, so where's mom? Where is she? Why is she not here? You would have so well, many questions. Well, they tell you she passed. Right. But you don't know what Understand means. what it means. Right. Is it going to come back? Yeah. Whatever. When then, she's coming back. Then as you get older, you start to understand it. Right. And my father, he died when I was in the seventh grade from mm. a heart attack. And um, I remember I was in junior high school and... They called me in the principal's office, and everybody had that face. Mm. Like, damn, man. You know, so he died. I wasn't there. And that's a sudden death with a heart attack. Once again, you know, I was separated from the whole mm -hmm. funeral situation. I think really it just made me try to figure out what's going to happen to me. Right. What's really going on in my life? And, 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 and as a kid, I guess you get felt like, why am I getting dealt all these bad hands? I ain't Exactly. So I come to... Uh, I got shipped to Los Angeles to live with my father's sister. Oh, okay, that's how you ended up there. And uh, that was beginning junior high, well, junior mm -hmm. high school. And uh, my father's sister had two sons that she had already raised. They were out of high school. So I kind of was like, all right, I'm going to take care of you because I got to. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't really like love. It was kind of like I was dumped on a relative. And I Did you know her before? No. That's what I was trying to, okay. Didn't know her. I actually, they sent, told me, you know, since so much was going on with my dad, we're going to send you out to L.A. for the summer. Mm. And then all my clothes showed up. I'm like, you know. <laughs> wow. wow. You know, so th nowadays you discuss things with kids. When I was growing up, you you as a kid, you ain't got nothing. No to, choice. No, you just moved around. And so anyway, I, I was. Is with, that helpful or hurtful in society now? I don't know. I, I, I really don't know. I mean, you know, the thing of it is, is, is that. Whatever hurt me made me too, you mm -hmm. know. So, at this point, I'm in a great place in my life. So it's hard for me to say this would. Every little thing would have changed the trajectory of your life. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. Every little thing. So maybe it was meant for me to go through that now. Mm -hmm. Then and what you know, one thing about losing parents early, man. I got I got my wife, her father and mother are still alive. That's right. They yeah. haven't gone through that yet. Mm -hmm. Now. When you lose your parents early, you don't know them well enough. Like, you haven't had enough experience with them. So, losing them is cold, but it's not like losing them when you're in your 40s and they're still mm -hmm. alive. Look how much life you've had with them. Mm -hmm. So, I know, I, I mean, I don't wish it on anybody, but I've seen, like, my one of my best friends, Mickey, just lost his mother. Mm -hmm. And he's a grown man, and it, and it rocked him. Mm -hmm. It rocked him, because now he's such more, much more connected so I'm not saying it was better, mm -hmm. but I got I'm past that. Right, I'm mm -hmm. past that, and uh, I don't I don't know. Maybe way in my subconscious, I know one thing though. When you grow up as an orphan, uh, I think that makes me harder on my kids. Mm -hmm. You know because. I didn't have anybody there. So I'm like, you got somebody. So, you know, you should be able to figure this out. I was forced to figure it out. They're not forced to figure it out. So I figured it out. But live with my aunt, went to Crenshaw High School, and uh, basically left her house at 17. And you were only child? Yeah, only child. Mm -hmm. At 18, I was on my own. Uh, and I've been on my own ever since my whole life. And I never dealt with any living relatives. Yeah, we on Boss Talk TV. Shout out to E-He, the reason you see.